All right, we're live. Cool. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Project Nerdy International Tabletop Day celebration. Um, it, I believe that this was uh, that International Tabletop Day was launched by Geek and Sundry um, around about a decade ago. Uh, and for the past few years, it's been celebrated on the last weekend of April. Um, this year, it looks like Geek and Sundry are actually celebrating in June. So we're um, early to the party. Um, but I thought I would run uh, one of my favorite little one-shotting campaign um, adventures uh, with you guys. It's called The Wild Sheep Chase. So over on our own kind of private screens, um, apologies to any viewers, I did not have the opportunity to link this into the stream so you can see it, but I assure you it's super cool. <laughs> um, we have a little tavern scene. Um, so um, I'm going to start with David, I believe. Okay. David, you enter uh, the inn, and before you, you see uh, a room uh, sort of medium to large <laughs> size with um, four tables, uh, a bar across one side. Um, there are a few patrons kind of sat around in the bar having minor conversations drinking um barman stood behind the bar and there's a barmaid walking around serving food and checking people's drink orders um what do you want to do oh man we start with oh my god do we lose him out. <laughs> that's <laughs> That's Typical. hilarious. He's oh. dead already? <laughs> the one person that needs to be answering this question. Oh, he's back. He's back. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> so funny. I laughed sleep. <laughs> no. What do you want to do? Leave this chat. <laughs> oh. On purpose, I promise. Die first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, the last thing I heard of you was going to start with me, so... <laughs> uh, okay, so I, I described the scene. Um, it's your standard sort of tavern. <laughs> right. Um, four tables with benches either side, um, a bar over towards the left-hand side as you enter. So you enter through a door... Um, at this section here. Um, so you enter and you see uh, a kind of quiet tavern. Um, there are a few patrons just kind of sat having drinks, having mild conversations. Um, there is a kind of hum of music can't really see from where you're standing where it's coming from. Tell me what you want to do. I would like to approach the bartender. Mm -hmm. Cool. And can I talk to him? You can. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sure. Um, I would, ooh, I get excited and then I get frustrated about what I'm going to say. Um, You're right there, laddie. Have you ever, ever been in a bar before? What can I do for you? I've, I've never been in a bar, um, but I'm supposed to be here. Um, do you, do you know, sir, good sir? <clears throat> Do you know, good sir, is there a person that goes by the moniker N here? Laddie, I don't think I've ever heard anyone go by a single letter 
in my long and lustrous life. Last. But if you want to grab a beer and sit down, then perhaps whoever you're looking for might turn up. I do you have something um, less alcoholic, perhaps a water? <laughs> You realize it's where you are, right? I only know I'm supposed to be here. Didn't know I was going to have to drink as well. <laughs> um, right, well, I'll, I'll see what I can do. And he kind of shuffles around beneath the bar. You hear, you hear some slopping, swishing noises. Um, and he hands you a mug of possibly clear water it's, it's oh God. only vaguely beige <laughs> okay uh that'll be two copper pieces two copper pieces it is um i kind of swirl it and look at it and take a sip and set it down and kind of just wait at the bar. Uh, okay, can you roll me a constitution saving throw? <laughs> Damn it! Yes. Yes, I can. Um, how do I do that? <laughs> Let's see. So you're going to roll a d20, um, and then you will add your constitution saving throw um, bonus. 20... Plus two, seven. Okay. Uh, you feel vague, easy. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay, so you're stood by the bar, um, and you notice over to your right, um, sat alone at a table near to the very back of the inn um, is a Holly can you describe what you look like please oh I am super hot um, I have super long black as night hair with like this massive ass red streak in it um, and I look dangerous as all hell so and I'm wearing lots of leather. <laughs> I like it. Okay, so. So what's up? <laughs> okay. <laughs> How are you going to react to what you see, David? Um, I'm going to leave my drink at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, walk over and kind of stand at the end of the table and I would say <clears throat> Good day, my lady. Do you have a moment to talk about our Lord and Savior the Silver Flame? <laughs> Do I get to respond to this? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um... You have 10 seconds to walk away. <laughs> um. Oh, y yes, I, I see. Um, thank you very much. Um, if you don't mind me asking, are you here on business? Why I'm here is none of your concern. Um, par pardon, but... Um, if if it is concerning matters of darkness, it is my concern. It's um it is my sacred duty to eliminate the darkness, and um, yeah. <laughs> it, um yeah, okay. Um. Okay, I'm gonna say. Listen, I don't know what you want from me, but unless you sent me a mysterious letter, you need to walk away again. Ooh, a letter. I, d I did not send a letter, but I received a letter. Um, did, 
did you get it from um, a person who said that they know who they are and their N? Was it the letter N? Uh, yes. I didn't get anything that said quite that, but it said you N own. Oh, well. Could it be the same person? It's it's possible. Um, I, I don't know. Can Why don't you sit down next to me and we'll figure this out and I'll try not to hurt you. Oh, yes, that'd be nice. Thank you. <clears throat> so do you sit down? Yes, I sit down. <laughs> okay. After a lot of <laughs> so um you two are talking. Um meanwhile, over at the entrance to the inn, uh a figure walks in. Um Kyle, do you want to describe what you look like? Yeah, I have a kind of tall and I have like a black coat cloak <laughs> on that's kind of obscuring my face as much as possible. I have a very mysterious appearance to myself. Cool. So you walk in to the tavern um, and you see before you uh, the scene that has already been described. Why don't you go ahead and tell me what you're going to do? I um, slowly kind of check out all the people in the uh, in the inn, and um, I make my way to a, a table that is currently empty, so I can sit back and observe what's going on. To see if the person I'm looking for is here. Okay. So you end up at a table actually adjacent to the table where the two others are sat um but you park yourself in uh, a seat over kind of diagonally far away from them um and as you sit down you spot in the corner of the room a curious looking individual um just kind of hunched in a corner seemingly minding their own business where am i in this like bottom corner of the screen is that mm -hmm. okay so you if any or i don't know how just kyle has looked at me mm -hmm. okay so kyle you. you squint and you do a double shake because you're not sure how something this large can miss people's sight. Um, you see a six foot six, 250 pound creature with like soft features in their face, like animal-esque. Their skin is kind of pink, kind of tan, but also maybe like a pale green. You can't really tell, depends on the light. And they have long strawberry blonde hair that is kind of braided back in like a Viking-esque style, they wear kind of just traveler's leathers. And the one big thing that kind of stands out against the color pattern is that there is like a shell hanging centered on, on the front of their, um, like it, it kind of is the first statement thing. Like after, after they're, size um but you you your eye gets like drawn to this shell and you're not really sure why cool what do you want to do with that information um i uh i slowly get up and um approach this uh this individual and um quietly ask if uh if they're Mr. Owen. So in response to your question, you hear 
a slightly celtic -y, scottish accented answer and that is your description of this person's voice. <laughs> I'm not oh, going come on, to it. attempt it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I had con crunch. I did not have time to practice. <laughs> uh, um, uh, they look up at you confused and say, say again? Uh, somebody uh, has offered me a job, a Mr. Owen, but uh, I'm not sure who he is. is. Is that you? It's not me, but it sounds like you have like quite a interesting life. Do you do you often ask strangers if they're someone? My business often involves strangers. Good answer. Wow, me too. Now, now my business involves strangers. I'm also looking for a stranger. Do you, and I pick up um, the paper parchment that's been in front of me and I hand it to Kyle and it says, help in all caps, and there is a paw print that looks like blood on it. And then of course, like our location, which now Kyle may or may not know, and I can DM that location if, if necessary. So I've def I've op offered you the only information I know. Well, this is interesting, but it, it doesn't- Punched in the corner staring at a parchment. This is interesting, but does it seem to be the uh, the same job I was messaged about? Mine promised a big payday. Oh, okay. And I reach out my hand to take my parchment back. All right, hand it back to you. you. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drop. And I just, I just, you know, place it flat on the table again, and I just go back to kind of a non-threatening, contemplative state. It's at this point. Like, I don't ignore you, but I don't like prod the conversation further. It's at I this just point wait, that you hear a, a loud kind of stomping hoof like noise um, coming from outside the tavern. Um, it's like the, the rushing of uh, a hoofed creature. Um. Would I recognize, like, whether this would be a threatening situation or a panicked situation or, like, normal to the surroundings? Can you give me an animal handling check? Okay. So, D20 plus... Oh, wait. No, that's... Okay. D20 plus five. So... Oh, God. <laughs> Six. <laughs> so does that mean that that was actually a, a, a one? Yep, natural <laughs> one. Damn it. <laughs> um, yeah, I, mean, I am so focused on my piece of paper, I didn't even notice. <laughs> <laughs> For all you know, this could be uh, a group of mountain giants coming to destroy the inn, or it could be uh, a puppy frolicking with its playmates. Okay, great. So helpful. It's the second one. Thanks, thanks backstory. <laughs> so I'm just, just basically completely missing it. <laughs> um, yeah, so the door of the tavern bursts open and in rushes a sheep. A sheep. Uh, a sheep. So everyone in the inn at this point is able to see this sheep who has come tumbling through the door. <laughs> um, weirdly, it kind of looks around with a surprising amount of calm, considering it's just rushed through the door of a tavern and it's a sheep. 
Um, and it actually fixes its eyes on you, cat. Um, oh, okay. No, I got it. Moved really quick. <laughs> <laughs> like all over those people. Are those people okay? <laughs> it did knock one of them off his chair. Okay. Um, oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, cat, you notice that in the sheep's mouth is a scroll. Rolled up piece of paper. Okay. Um, so again, I am a very large entity at 6'6", six, six, um, but I move with like a very like measured calmness and very like unthreatening. I kind of, you know, lean down and I, I, I reach out my hand like, like fingers down as if like it's a paw and like I kind of look at the sheep and ask oh is this for me and I slowly open my hand and outstretch it and hope that maybe it understands me I think I'm not casting anything but mm-hmm. yeah I'm trying to look at my... (laughs) Cool. So it does seem to understand you, um, and it gently places the scroll at your feet. I kind of look at it like, okay, and I bend down and I reach to pick up the scroll. Cool. Cool. Um, as you touch the scroll, you feel a, a mild tingling sensation in your fingers. <laughs> Ooh. I, I, in game, I, or in world, I react, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I pick it up and I unscroll it. Cool. Meanwhile, over at the other table, Holly and David, what's going on in your world? Um, I definitely jumped up when... I heard, we heard the uh, animals rushing past and I've been kind of like warily watching the sheep interact with the really big fam in the corner. (laughs) Um, And I would say, pretty lady, come on. It looks like something's happening. (laughs) <laughs> and I say I say it's just a giant sheep and a giant person <laughs> calm down <laughs> okay Uh-oh. so Kat when you open the scroll you look at it um, and it's written in uh, a language that you don't understand. Okay. Um, It's in a language I don't understand. Mm. Okay. I (laughs) I look at the sheep and I ask, did you did you write this? this? Is this from you? The sheep tilts its head at you, and uh, insofar as sheep can actually make facial expressions, it looks quizzically confused. Okay. Did someone send you this to me? Did someone send this with you to me, specifically? Were you looking for me? At, at the words, you don't have were you thoughts. looking for me, it, just, it nods. <laughs> and I'm like, and I, I say out loud, you don't have paws though. <laughs> like I'm trying to puzzle out something and like, I'm clearly thinking about something, but I'm definitely not communicating. Well. It makes an attempt to snatch the scroll out of your hands. Um, I pull, at, in, in a reaction, I 
lift my arm up because I'm very tall. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you can you roll uh, just a raw dexterity roll for me? Dex, okay. Uh, 16 plus with dexterity. Where is dexterity? Um, 17. Okay. So it is a sprightly little sheep and actually manages to snatch the scroll out of your hand before you get it out of the way. Um, <laughs> and it's so it, nice though. It trots away from you, kind of shimmying its butt in a sort of mildly disgusted sort of way. Um, and oh God. wanders over to Holly and kind of just waves its face at you right. with the scroll in its mouth. All right, well, I get up and I follow the sheep for sure. Because <laughs> it's already said that I needed to be there, so I feel like I need to follow it and stay with the sheep. Cool. So, um, David, as, as the creature passes you, you look up and you notice just how tall they really are <laughs> face to face. <laughs> cool. So, Holly. Okay. I look at the sheep and I have just got this like WTF look on my face. Like, why is this happening? To me, this is not why I came here. And as I start to notice the sheep, I slowly like look up and I'm like, okay. That is like a giant person. Wow. And I say to Holly, hi, you should take the scroll. The sheep wants you to have the scroll. <laughs> and then I say, the sheep doesn't know what it wants. It's a sheep. <laughs> Some sheep Hearing you are say that, it waves bit. the scroll again. I was like, some sheep do know what they want. I... I okay. would like you to look at the scroll. Okay, so I sigh and roll my eyes like super hard and like fast as a whip, I like snatched the scroll out of that sheep's mouth. Can I do that? <laughs> it doesn't resist. Tight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I, I have the scroll. Uh-huh. Uh, you're going to look. And I, can, I, can I say to the giant person, how much do you want for this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anything for this, but do you do you recognize anything about it? And I I realize that I'm really tall again, and I like kind of bend down to one knee because <laughs> I kind of just like look around and I'm like mm, I'm right. I'm very tall around people, and I <laughs> I just remember like that. People aren't used to me. <laughs> okay. So I read it. Can I read it? Mm, you can. Google it is something. written in a language that you can read and write and understand. Um, mm. You recognize the script as being goblin. Oh, yeah. I'm good at that. And it <laughs> is a spell scroll it's a scroll of speak with animals so mm. what do i do with that do i tell somebody that your information do with it what you will okay now i have this really cool information so i'm just gonna be nice for like probably the only like fourth time in my life and tell giant person what it says because I'm nice. Wow. Do you want to learn how to do that? I already know how to do that. Sheep, am I supposed to talk to you? <laughs> Would you like me to talk to you? Sure. <laughs> oh, okay. And I then, um, what is it? I, well, I guess I just, I, I look over to Holly and I'm like, okay, do you have any friends here? I wouldn't call him a friend, but here's this guy I met earlier that's looking for somebody. Are you looking for somebody? 
I mean, I I'm a, I think I'm looking for pe someone with paws, and the sheep doesn't have paws, so I think I'm still looking. And I turn and I look at whoever Holly's looking at. I'm looking at David. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Um, I, I'm, I'm Brother Pike. You're very tall. I like yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Pike, I'm going to need like 10 minutes to talk to the sheep. Would you mind <laughs> like getting it some, do you have any meat or anything? Or maybe just like petting him and being calm. I don't think this nice lady really wants to do that. So I don't want to ask her to. Oh. Would you mind doing that? Yes, of course. Okay, cool. So then I like just completely pass by like any other like communication and I sit down to, uh, for 10 minutes to cast uh, Speak With Animals. <laughs> and I forget what level that is. What kind? What level of spell that is? Oh, first level. Okay, so I have to mark off a first level spell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. So, in ten minutes, is there anything else anybody else wants to do? Because I'm occupied. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I do something? I don't know how anything works. Okay, I want to grab David and I'm going to say let's while she's doing this let's go talk to that guy that was talking to her because I want to know what he knows um, and I'll say this is really weird <laughs> um yes you should go talk to the dark man darkness needs to be eliminated it is scary I need to stay here and pet the sheep <laughs> oh right I forgot about that okay crazy I'm going to go talk to this guy just don't get into any trouble while I'm gone no promises. <laughs> cool. Okay, can I just walk over? Or are you narrating? Oh. Me walking? So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> incredibly beautiful young lady. Dangerous looking. <laughs> incredibly beautiful and dangerous looking young lady approaches you. Um, I look up and uh, ask, "What are what do you want? What are you looking at?" I say, "I want to know what's going on here. I'm looking for somebody, and a sheep just burst into here with a scroll in its mouth, and is talking to the person that you were talking to. And you look sp suspicious, and I want to know why you're here. Did you send me a letter? Can I have a knife." <laughs> Damn. Um, I know nothing of this livestock. I don't know who this strange giant creature is, um, but I have also received a letter, but I did not send a letter to anybody. Who was your letter from? Uh, Mr. Owens, who's yours from? Mine was you and own. That sounds like Owens. Do you think it's the same person? Perhaps. So, uh, what was your letter about? That's none of your concern. It's a private matter. What was yours about? <laughs> the only way I'll reveal that type of information is if you have some gold to exchange for it. I'm here on business. Uh, I laugh really bitchily, and I say, <laughs> in your dreams, and I say, I got to go see a sheep about a thing, and then I walk <laughs> away back to the sheep, and I think, this guy is the worst. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> Why me? <laughs> <clears throat> so, Kat, as you finish your ritual... Um, you see the sheep has been patiently um, and quite contentedly as it's being scratched behind the ear every so often by the strange stumbling gentleman. Um, 
you you notice that the sheep is is waiting patiently um, for you to finish casting your spell. It seems to know that you're casting the spell. Now this is much better. Hi, who are you? What brought you to me? Do you know someone with paws who needs help? Oh, finally, woman. I thought you'd never get the message. Now, we absolutely must be away from here. Now, all of you, all of you, uh, you seem to be the only person who has the good sense to use the relevant arcane implements to facilitate communication. So you you shall have to be my translator for this rabble. Uh, I shall I'd be all... happy to do that for you. Can I tell them that I speak sheep and that I need to tell them the information? All right. So I just look to Holly and David's uh, characters and say hi. So I can speak sheep now for a little while. Ooh. I'm going to ask him all these questions that we need to ask him, but we also need to leave, he says. So, and then I go back to the sheep and what were you saying? I'm sorry to cut you off. I just wanted to tell them that it's probably going to be a fast conversation. Yes, yes, absolutely. Now, you really all must, must leave uh, with me forthwith. Uh, together, we shall reclaim my abode from <laughs> my fool apprentice uh he really has done it this time uh, as you can see i'm now a sheep i'm not ordinarily a sheep uh this whole situation has has really knocked not knocked me somewhat <laughs> so um, what, is, what with, is your, with your name help, not sheep sheep man my name is Fenethir Shinebright, and if you must know, I am an elven wizard of great power, or at least I was until my fool apprentice stole my wand and turned me into this. So, if you will, come with me to <laughs> defeat him, free the other animals, and uh, restore me to my good body. You will be rewarded. Good sir, I can see you over there. Mr. Moon, <laughs> you will be rewarded greatly, uh, all of you. And I have information that will help each and every one of you, I'm sure. So, all right. Fen Fenewit, what was the first name? <laughs> Fenethir, Fenethir, <laughs> Fenethir Shinebright. <laughs> Sorry, DM, what was the first name? And <laughs> Fenethir? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so in game, I turn and I say, this isn't the same name as my, like, or no, I turn and I say, and I repeat everything to them because I was going to say something else. Now I don't remember. So I turn to them and I repeat all the information. I am. Um, can I say? Are, and then I ask, are one of you Mr. Moon? <laughs> that would be me. Yeah. Wicked Moon Shadow here. Well, he's the sheep says he's got money for you, I think. I don't know. He's got th stuff that everything feels that's important and he's a wizard and I maybe he knows someone with paws. He said there's other animals and you guys are all looking for people. Should we go with him? I think we, I want to go with you. Sheep, I'm going with you. I mean, sorry, Fenwith, I'm going with you. <laughs> I don't know if we should trust the sheep. It's just a sheep. I just told you, he's not just a sheep. He's an elvish wizard and he's stuck and we should help him. And he said he's gonna help, he'll help every one of us if we help him. That sounds like a great way to spend an afternoon. <laughs> um, I look around the room one more time because I'm here for an extremely important reason and I'm not seeing anybody that would be the kind of person I'm looking for. And this seems to be like my best route at the moment to find out some more information. Um, so I sigh and I roll my eyes again. And I'm like, 
I guess I'll go with you guys, but I don't want this guy to talk too much. And I don't want that guy, moon person, to look at me. <laughs> Can we all agree on that? I mean, I don't control other people. I just can speak with animals sometimes, so. Oh, yes, yes, I shall try not to talk too much. Um, If we could go Great. with the nice sheep person, what was the name? Then the, the, Mr. <laughs> Mr. 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 Fen, I should do it, pretty lady. And come on, the the dark man, he, he there's, there's money in it for the dark man, and we should go. <laughs> um, I reckon I'll, I'll tag along, but if, if I don't see, uh, some sign of this reward quickly. Uh, Y'all are on your own. Cool. <laughs> so the sheep trots towards the door um, of the inn, super speedy, knocking people about <laughs> as ever. Um, <laughs> and I will assume that you're all going to follow? Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. already com committed to following. Yep. Cool. You are super committed to that sheep. I like it. <laughs> He's a sheep. <laughs> He's a sheep that's not a sheep. A sheep cool. who needs help. A sheep not a sheep that needs help. I'm into it. <laughs> cool. Grew. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, as you come outside, um, the town itself, um, the town of Shirebrook, is you know your typical sleepy coastal town um it's it's quite a large town you know for for what it's worth um decently sized homes um there are a few kind of townsfolk milling about it's still um kind of late afternoon it's not quite dark yet um yeah a couple of people essentially see you um Pop out of the inn following a sheep. And yeah, there are a couple of quizzical looks here and there. I do not notice any quizzical looks. I happily, steadfastly follow a sheep. <laughs> I glare down everybody that gives us a bad look. Like, mind your own business. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool. Um, so... <laughs> You do spot um, Cat over um, to your far right. Um, you spot a large, okay. by your standards, pretty pretty normal sized, um, grayish skinned looking fellow, um, looking quite menacing, um, and holding a big old axe. Ray, is is the sheep like what is our like what direction are we seemingly heading in uh towards the guy like towards the guy with the axe to our right mm -hmm. so we've come out to turn oh my god so, that's did you guys hear that <laughs> sorry anyways um, so we've come out to the tavern to turn right and head toward this ex person thing. I look down at the sheep and I say, do you know this person? Is this your apprentice? No, that is his bodyguard, a lout by the name of Guz. He could cause us some issues I your feel. apprentice has a bodyguard he does he's uh he's gained himself some influence over the past week with his his antics oh so this was turning you into a sheep wasn't an accident it was on purpose yes fool okay not got I that I rely, I relay this back to the group that our sheep is actually under duress as a sheep and not an accident from its, its apprentice and that this person is probably not very nice. 
um, and probably going to give us an issue. And I also tell the sheep that if there's anything else that you need to tell me, you should probably tell me now, because if we're going to have to deal with someone, I won't be able to speak with you for very much longer. So is there anything else that is really important? Because you kind of need to really tell me what's important, like now. And right. also straightforward. Okay, so I am um, the, 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 oh, golly, you've put me under such pressure. Uh, <laughs> the most important piece of information is that the wand that the Fool Apprentice Noak stole from me uh, has the ability to turn people into animals, as I'm sure you could have worked out if you had put the pieces together. Uh, and so now we must get the wand back and stop him before he turns the whole village into animals. Cool, because I'm guessing it. whatever we're about to do is going to take longer than 10 minutes. Um, I say this all to the party with me. Um, I say we can fight him. No problem. If it comes to that. Cool. So, what are you guys going to do? I think we should approach I... him. A. Eh? Thoughts? Oh. Opinions? Um, I would walk up to him and say, you're not going to give us any trouble, are you? <laughs> <a> terrible idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you give me the sheep, I won't give you any trouble. All right? How's that sound? Can we hear no way. this from where we are? Or do yeah. we have to get closer to hear this conversation? Yeah, we can hear it. Okay. I say no way. Yeah, the sheep is a person and people don't belong to other people unless they want to. Yes, well... Master Noak says that the sheep must come back, so come back, the sheep shall. The sheep doesn't want to come back. Back off. Right, well, I can see that <laughs> we are going to have a problem then. I guess we are. <laughs> right, um, and I would like everyone to roll initiative. Yeah. All right. Okay, what do I do? <laughs> Natural 20! Oh my god. Not gonna lie, I'll show you. I'll show you. Oh shit, did I knock something important over? I did. Oh no. Can you see? Yeah, that's so the excitement exciting. of the crit. <laughs> okay, so am I just rolling okay. this d20 dice? So, uh -huh. 21, but with a natural 20. Okay, okay I have a 7. Oh, 10. Cool. And David, you rolled a one. <laughs> yeah, I did roll a one. <laughs> Thanks, David. Um, okay. I'm 16. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? Okay. okay. Um, cool. Yeah. So, uh, I guess that means, Kat, you get to decide what you're going to do first. So, I've gathered that he's not a very nice man. And I'm trying to, let me, sorry, I'm trying to get, get my map up to like accurately show me this section. I zoomed out so I could see the whole space and now I can't see <laughs> anyone but dots. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry. Bear with me, DM, bear with me. Oh shit, now that's too close. Okay. Um, I... One, two, three, four. Wait. One, two, three. Mm, that's. Okay. I am going to cast Entangle Ooh. on centered at our angry man with an axe. And. Um, but so that it won't hit my little sprightly friend that has run up there. So, like kind of center back because I think it's it's a 20 foot radius uh -huh. and I think it hits 
our guy and the wolves or whatever that it's around him. Okay, so. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And I'm just casting it at first level. Okay, that. Uh, this is. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. That's fine. It's a strength save of 13. Okay. Cool. So, I believe that is a 20 foot radius. I might need to match it out a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying to get all four creatures in that line. Okay. So, like this? Yeah, exactly. Cool. Okay, so uh, strength against a DC of 13. Ooh, that is going to be... Yep. So, for everybody else, uh, weeds and vines have sprouted from the ground to try to um, hold all of the aggressors in the, in the same spot. Um, creature in the area when you cast the spell must succeed on a strength saving throw or be restrained by the entangling plants until the spell ends. A creature restrained from the plants can use its action to make a strength um, save if, if it succeeds. It uh, frees itself, but otherwise it's grappled and can't go anywhere. Its speed is reduced to zero, I believe. Okay. Cool. So I'm not sure if you can see, but I've put some numbers there. Um, we had a, so yeah, two of the wolves failed and are now entangled. Um, so as you see these, um, yeah, as you see the very tall woman extend her hand, um, Vines kind of leap from the ground, uh, and two of the wolves near the uh, grey-skinned fellow um, are entangled. Um, and the other wolf and the the fellow himself are able to kind of drag and pull at the at the vines to get rid of them, um, and they are free. However, the two kind of wolves either side are entangled. The outside flanking wolves are entangled, but the two in the middle are fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I'm not going to do anything else. I'm not going to do any bonus action, but I do want to move myself in front of the sheep in kind of a protective, like, I am in front of the sheep. You have to go through me to get to the sheep. Cool. Okay. So after... Cat, I believe it is Wolf's turn. So, um, can they attempt to free themselves with an action? I believe, yeah, their action is to attempt to free themselves, but then they would lose any other action. I think, cool. Oh, wow, okay, one of them remains entangled, but the other one frees himself with a plum, biting, snarling, and clawing at the vines he frees himself um so the topmost wolf is free now um and the bottom one is still entangled the middle one who was not actually ensnared is going to run up to david's character and bite <gasps> no okay Cool. So, I, I'm i just going to roll this in the open so that we can see. Ooh, 10 is not going to hit you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, that's the bite, and it... Yep. Cool. Okay. Um, so next up we have Kyle. 
what would you like to do? All right, I um, remove from beneath my cloak uh, my longbow, and I aim it at the uh, the gray-skinned fellow, and basically with a very intimidating voice, um, let him know I am much better with this bow and arrow than you are with that toy in your hands. <laughs> Drop it now and call your puppies back or his arrow will fly. Cool. Uh, so are you, you actually attacking or are you holding your attack? Threatening. Sorry, I'm th just threatening. Okay. Threatening, yeah. Can you give me an intimidation roll? Intimidation. And I also had a plus one on that. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um, cool. Okay. <clears throat> right, well, uh, I can see from this viney situation and your very impressive uh, bow piece of action there that um, we are not quite as evenly matched as I would have hoped. However, <laughs> uh, I, I really really more scared of master noak than i am of you so uh that that's that's going to be that i'm afraid <laughs> anything else from you carl with that um I would like, can i try to shoot his axe out of his hand with my arrow Ooh, that's going to be very difficult for a precision shot like that. Um, roll an attack with disadvantage. So what that means is you roll 2d20 and you have to take the lowest result. Okay. Cool. So that nine plus your attack bonus. Oh yeah, attack plus five. Plus five. So that'll be a fourteen um, against his armor, and that does hit. Woo! Um, yes. Cool. So can you roll your damage die, which will be a D eight? D eight. Eight. Oh, yikes. And then you add, um, so it will say on your damage, it will say 1d8 plus, I believe it'll be plus three. Yeah, plus three. Cool. So you do 11 damage and he drops his axe in pain. Cool. Nice. So he's disarmed. Um, Holly. Well, now that he's disarmed, I think I'm just gonna like go for it. And uh, I'm normally partial to my longbow, but I think I'll just take out my dagger. I have no idea what I'm doing, so you might have to help me. I'll just take out my <laughs> dagger <laughs> and can I throw it at his heart? <laughs> Or is that like really messed up? Because he's like not a really bad guy. He's just like kind of bad. Uh, you you can make. You have to make your own you choices. Make. Yeah. Um, again. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, from everybody's reaction, maybe that's not the best way to go. No. Live your truth. Live your character's truth. <laughs> <laughs> you do your um, girl. Okay. What? I'll. I'll. Um, yeah, I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> what do I have to do? So, so again, you're you're aiming for a very specific part of him. So if you could roll uh, me two d twenty and take the lowest value. So I just do d twenty twice, or I do two. Okay, I see. 
Nine. Okay. Nine plus your attack bonus with a dagger. Uh, four. Thirteen. Math. With a dagger. Dagger plus four attack. Is that wrong? Okay. Cool. Um. Yep. So that will hit. No, oh, it that. won't. Oh, oh, come on. It won't. <laughs> just, just doesn't. Some I'm afraid. <laughs> so you you throw your dagger, um, and uh, now that he's dropped his axe, his hands are free to be a little bit more nimble. He <sighs> deflects the dagger away from his heart. Luckily, we slap it away. Mm, he's very, very okay. fast reactions on this. Oh, pretty good. Very mm. good dude. Okay, anything else you want to do before you hand over the turn to Gus? Um, I want to scream in frustration because I'm normally an excellent shot and that was kind of bullshit. Um, and then I'm going to look at... Um, mm, I'm gonna, can I ask uh, David's character if he's okay? I'm fine! Because I've kind of grown slightly fond of him even though he annoys me. <laughs> Okay, good. Um, I'm gonna look at everybody else and say, does anybody want to do anything else here? Come on, this is ridiculous. Cool. Not very helpful. <laughs> hey, Ari did something. Um, I did too. The wind got in the way. So it's <laughs> it's now Gaz's turn and he jaunts up the battlefield. He runs a pace right into the face of the guy who knocked his axe out of his hand um, with an arrow and is going to punch you square in the face, hopefully. Um, cool. So let me just... <laughs> oh! So that's a that's a natural twenty. Um, <laughs> so Oof. that that is a crit, um, and what that means is that he will roll his damage die twice. So because he's only attacking with his fists now, you dropped his nice. axe out of his hand. He okay. will. Do six damage plus. Oh, I forgot to add the plus. Plus three. So, Kyle, you take nine points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Um, and then that just leaves David. Okay. Um. David, have you played? D and D before? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, a little. So I'm going to. Uh, run up behind the. Behind Guz and hit him over the head with my mace. Okay. Uh, one thing to bear in mind, when you leave melee range with a creature, um, it will get an attack of opportunity against you. Because okay. you're essentially turning your back on it. So are you happy to receive that attack before you run off into other combat? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, that's what I was bringing up. It's <laughs> like you... But if you think, look at us, like he, our foe has run in front of Kyle and Holly's like right there and I'm right there. And there's like, there's only one wolf entangled and the, and you're with another wolf. Okay. And I, as long as, cause, and that one wolf is going to stay entangled until he either breaks free wow. or I am attacked. So Technically, we have three foes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Moment. Okay. Does that make sense? That does make sense. So, in which okay. case, I would like to smack the wolf in front of me with my mace. 
Okay, cool. <laughs> um, give me an attack roll then. Okay. Should I roll 1d20? Yep. And then you're going to add on your attack. What what is my attack? I'm sorry, my attack bonus. Um, or if what am I, I adding? If I remember correctly, it will be plus four. But um, you will add your strength modifier plus your proficiency. So, okay, yes, 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 yes. You're right. It is plus four. Cool. Okay. Oh, six. Seriously? Dear. Okay. So the wolf is a very dodgy critter, and as you swing your mace down for its head, it just snarls and whips its head to the side. You miss. Okay. Anything else you'd like to do before the round restarts? Um, nope, I'm good. Cool. <laughs> okay. Cat, what would you like to do? Okay, um... Am I under the impression that I am five feet away from our attacker? Mm -hmm. And like, so he's in my melee range as well. Uh huh. Okay. So I want to shift again slightly in between our attacker and, and the sheep because my. I am protecting the sheep. Cool. Um, so we <laughs> are catty cornered. Sheep. Yeah, um, and I will produce flame, mm -hmm. which I can actually use to attack within 30 feet. Mm -hmm. um, it is a ranged spell attack, and it'll take, if I succeed, it's a 1d8 fire damage on our opponent. Cool. Okay, so... Eleven plus what is my attack plus? What do I do? Uh, my, so it will be it's a your, cantrip. So is it a spell or? If it's a ranged spell attack, yeah, it'll be your wisdom plus proficiency. Proficiency, my spell proficiency, right? So yeah, w wisdom I believe is plus three for you plus your proficiency. So it should be a plus five on top of that. Five. So eleven, five, sixteen, yep. plus three, nineteen. That's gonna hit. Okay, and so one d8 of fire damage. Mm -hmm. Ooh, which one do I want to use? Let's use my critical roll dice. Ooh. Uh, eight. Oh yikes. Uh huh. Yes. Cool. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you, yep. critical roll. <laughs> yep. Yep. You were a worthy twenty dollars spent. <laughs> he yells in disgust as he notices that his best outfit is singed now. <laughs> Ooh, oh no. <laughs> okay, so Wolfie, who is in the vines, is going to attempt to my, escape. Wait, cantrip? Is it, cantrips are a bonus action, right? So I still have an action? Uh, I believe produce or... flame is actually an action. So some okay. cantrips are bonus, some are, some are action. Okay. Then cool. I'm done. Yeah, casting time one action. Just checking. Cool. Um, cool. So Wolfie, who is entangled, is still entangled. Um, I believe they take damage for for time that they're oh. spent entangled, right? Oh, sweet. Um, maybe. I mean, he's restrained. <laughs> right. Okay, that's fine. If there's no, I might be thinking of a I, different entangling spell. Yeah, it's, yeah. I don't think I'm strong enough to do damage yet. <laughs> okay. I think that might be when I'm higher, a higher level. Yeah, cool. Just, just restrained. Okay. Yeah, but just the other wolf who managed to get himself free before is gonna pounce mm -hmm. and, hack tactics wise, he's gonna come around to your flank. Mr. David. Okay. Uh, so you're going to get a bite attack from the front and the back. And because they are working as a pack, they both get advantage. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Cool. Okay. Eight. 
18 and 20. Okay, so... Oh. Oh. So you did... So it's a crit oh, no. <laughs> okay, so that's the first wolf. Um, 20 is... Yeah, you're right, a critical. Um, so... 2d4 plus 2. So you take 8 piercing damage from the first bite. Oof. Okay. And the second attack is 16 plus 4. So that's 20. Um, and that's going to hit you too. For ten piercing damage. That's so crazy. <laughs> ah, okay, so a crit gave you eight damage, a normal hit gave you ten. So that's a total of eighteen <laughs> piercing damage. Okay. Coming at you. Um and that's that's that for the wolves. So we are back <laughs> round to Kyle. Can you guys see Kona's um Oh, enjoyment baby. of our game. <laughs> I'm so very cute. much with my creature. I'm very much channeling my character right now. It's fine. She's like your <laughs> sheep. <laughs> it's a, the uh, the grace kind of guy is still right in front of me, correct? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's what I thought. All right. Since I have a very uh, uh, I'm very skilled with slot up hand, I want to remove my dagger without him noticing and quickly try to stab him in his stomach. Right, okay. Um, cool, so I'm going to say that you are rolling that with advantage since he hopefully is not going to notice. So can you just give me a quick sleight of hand check? So just rolling a d20? Yeah. Yeah. Fourteen with a plus seven. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this guy is rolling well. Um, okay, you're not going to get advantage because he does spot you pulling the dagger out. But yeah, just roll me an attack. All right. Uh, nine, and my dagger's plus five. Cool. So that's uh, 14 to hit, and it does hit. So go ahead and roll me damage on your dagger, which I believe is 1d4. Okay. Okay. Four. Yep. And then add your dexterity bonus to that. Uh, plus three. Cool, so that's five damage. Okay, he's looking worse for wear now. Um, receiving stabs and smacks and slashes from left, right, and center. Um, also singed. Yeah, he's 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 not looking very happy. Um, but with that, Holly, it's your turn. Okay. I think David needs my help. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, um, can I like awesome sneaky roll over there? Like do like a cool <laughs> like ninja roll um, to where he is and attack the wolves. Okay. I think how I want to do that. So let's see. I... And bad at this. I have spells stuff I can do. Mm. <laughs> um, <laughs> I can. I would like to. What do I say? Conjure. <laughs> um, can I do hail of thorns? Okay. Ooh. So that's next time I hit. Um, this might. I think this is right. I'm just reading this online. <laughs> 
Next time you hit with a ranged weapon attack, in addition to the normal effects of the attack, the target and each creature within five feet of it must take a dexterity save. Uh huh. A creature okay. takes 1d10 piercing damage on a failed save or half as much on a success. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, because you're new to the game, I'm going to give you the warning that this says each creature within five feet. So if you're going to fire your bow on one of the wolves, mm -hmm. uh, then David's character is within five feet of that wolf. <sighs> so if he failed, he would take 1d10. This kid <laughs> is killing me. <laughs> And that's also a ranged attack, so she needs to back up, right? Yeah, you get disadvantage on ranged attacks if you're within five feet. Okay, maybe we yeah. don't do that one then? <laughs> Question mark? Um, so you can move do you just want to move back, kind of like you're stepping out from behind and away from our axe guy? You know, yeah. so that you're out of melee with your axe guy, but you're still, you have better visuals on the attackers and the wolves. Yes. Yes. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so how do I attack him now? The, the wolves without hurting David, what do I do? Do I, maybe I wanna like take out my longbow or do an unarmed strike and like punch him in the face? Is that a good <laughs> idea with a wolf? You want to explain the difference, Ryan? Yeah, sorry, I have problems. I'm not super good. Yeah. I cool. just, I'm not the DM. I shouldn't be explaining it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, okay. So, essentially, you have as many options as you want, really, but a ranged attack, you're going to do more damage than with your melee strikes, um, just because... Mm -hmm a bow by its very nature is is a lot more of a deadly weapon than your fists no matter how much training you've had um you can you can attack one creature individually with a standard ranged attack and not cause any harm to anyone else nearby um it's just that hail of thorns is kind of an area burst of of additional um damage that that um. would really cause the issue so um as long as you're you know outside of melee range with a creature and you're using your longbow you, you can do some pretty okay. decent damage with that thing okay so maybe i'll use my dagger again okay you you have a second dagger right because you threw the first one yeah i have no idea do i how do I find that out? <laughs> yeah, you, you're, you're likely to have at least two daggers on you. Yeah, I'm that cool. Okay. So <laughs> I will... Can I, I guess, can I attack both creatures or just one? Just one at the moment. Okay. I'll go with the one in front of David's character. Okay. And I will just throw my dagger somewhere because i don't want to be too precise because that's <laughs> more problems okay so yeah just give me <laughs> give me a range attack with your dagger then uh the stomach <laughs> <laughs> I have to roll i think is what he's saying yeah. sure <laughs> <laughs> Shit. oh yikes three <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you're more used to fighting people hand to hand than throwing things at them and it shows um you throw your dagger and it lands in the ground uh, the next fuck? to the wolf perfect sorry guys i'm just i'm distracted by a spider on my wall ew oh I mean, a little one Right. Charlotte. <laughs> cool. Um, so, Guz is going to, realizing that he is up against it, um, he's going to make a break for it and try and grab the sheep. But he's mo moving out of range of us, so I want to take uh, attack of opportunity on him. And Kyle, I suggest you do the same. And I wanted to be two-handed with my with my staff. Mm -hmm. Two-handed with my staff, attack of opportunity. 
which I think is, was it? It will be strength because you are using mm -hmm. your physical stats at the moment. You didn't use anything okay. to modify that. Um, so it's a just a plus two within the quarter staff, right? Mm -hmm. And it it'll be a two handed attack, which is more damage if I roll the right thing. So mm -hmm. thirteen plus two, fifteen. Yep, that's gonna hit him. So, so two d six. Whoa. whoa, really? No, I think it's one d eight. So it'd be a d six if you're one handed, a d eight if you're two. Oh, one d eight, one d eight. Okay, so I'll do a d eight again. Uh, six. Cool. Okay. Um, Kyle, are you going to take an attack of opportunity as well? Yeah, I'll also uh, stab at him with my dagger. Cool. Uh, I do that, I guess. So, yep, let's have an attack roll from you. Yep, that's going to hit. Um, <laughs> so, roll me a d4 and add on your plus three dexterity modifier. Woo. Seven. So he took a six and a seven. Okay. Um, he managed to survive that brutal onslaught. Um, and he's going to make a grab at Fenethir. Uh, and he is going to... <laughs> okay. Oh, so <laughs> the, the sheep is feeble, even compared to the absolutely oh, appalling Jesus. strength skills of the <laughs> half orc, and he is picked up, um, and he's gonna run this direction okay david yeah okay um still in the thick of it with these wool <laughs> friend people um i'm just going to swing my mace at the wolf in front of me again Okay. Uh, well, one d twenty. Oh, nice. Yep, that's gonna hit. Okay, and then okay. So where's my maze? Is one d six? Oh, you have to hit in the right command <laughs> for one. <laughs> Plus your strength modifier. Plus strength. Plus strength is two. So three. Cool. Okay. Oh. That hurt. <laughs> <laughs> um, you as you as you smack the wolf on the end of the snout with your mace, it it yelps, but kind of looks at you, um, and it's got strangely kind of knowing expression in its eyes. Oh. Right, so, Kat. Okay, um, I am going to move about half distance to follow. Okay. Um, oh God. I, there's not much I can do without hurting the sheep. I guess. <sighs> mm. You know what? I'm going to do my full distance and try to do a melee attack again. Okay. But this time, I'm going to cast Shillelagh on my um, weapon. Cool. On my staff. Cool, cool, cool. No doubt. 
Okay, so <laughs> what? Nothing. Do is it still my strength plus staff, but do I get a plus for my spell because I did the chili or is it just So instead strength? of strength or you will use wisdom. Wisdom? Okay. So wisdom plus the staff plus my roll, okay? Plus uh yeah. 17 plus three for wisdom is 20 plus two for the staff 22 cool yep that's gonna hit um which is 1d8 plus three yeah roll me that sweet d8 uh six plus three nine nine damage okay um guz is knocked unconscious yes how do you want to do this um <laughs> to steal the because <laughs> yeah um because i'm guessing that he's 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 either under like arm handling mm -hmm. the sheep and running i want to take my it's a two i did a two thing attack with this at Shalea, and i just want to boom on the back of his head like just good night <laughs> <laughs> Don't take my sheep. <laughs> and as, as he falls unconscious, he drops Fenethir, um from his arms, and you, you hear a Yay. kind of bleat of what could be thanks. You've run out yeah. of the ability to understand the sheep at this point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, I'm going to tell Fenethir to like get di give distance, get distance from his attacker, but to like stay by me. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> okay, so we have wolf number entangled. Still <laughs> wolf number. remaining entangled. My gosh. Yes. <laughs> Infective crowd control. Um, <laughs> and then we are going to have. Oh. A 17 to hit you, David. I believe that misses. Yeah, it does. I may see 18. Ooh. And a 20 is going to hit you, I'm afraid. Yep. For eight piercing damage. Yikes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Kyle, let's see what you got. All right. I am going to uh, take my bow out again and um, aim at the uh, wolf uh, behind uh, David. Okay, cool. And take a shot at him. Cool. Give me an attack roll. Five plus, I'm guessing plus five. Plus five, yeah. That does not hit, I'm afraid. Mm. Your arrow does kind of graze the flank of this wolf, but it doesn't notice any kind of pain. Anything else from you? So these are. Uh... So I think on the seasonal based effects I have, it says I can charm up to two visible creatures. Can I try to do that with the two wolves around David? Um, you can. So what will happen is you will do your do your thing, um, and then the effect happens after that. Okay. Cool. So essentially, do you want to do you want to reveal what you what you're gonna do? Well, I, well, I guess I'd like to charm the wolves uh, so they maybe become confused and stop attacking David. <laughs> <laughs> like, cool. Please. 
Okay. So, um, guys, all um, as you kind of look at Kyle's character, he vanishes um, in a puff of smoke and appears uh, 20 feet further away. Um, at the same time, we are going to have two 18s. <laughs> Oof. Um, so they succeed on their wisdom saves, unfortunately. Oh, bummer. Um, so they do not become charmed. And Carl, you won't be able to do that again until you've been to sleep or at least rested because elves don't sleep. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, right then. We now have our unconscious guy who fails one of his death saving throws. Oof. Well, bummer for him. <laughs> cool. David. Ooh, it's me. Okay. Um I need to do something fast. Or should it be Holly next? Did I skip Holly? It's because yeah, I'm did. not doing anything good. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Holly. Holly. Holly's up. David, Thanks. you can still plan. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to attack this creature behind David again. Or I guess in front of him. I don't know where which way he's looking. With my longbow. Is okay. That okay. That is okay. <laughs> Yay. Okay, so D am I rolling now? A. Mm -hmm. Please don't suck. Cool. That is gonna hit. So let's see your 1d8 damage. 1d8. Oh, I'm supposed to do this for you. Can I do that? Oh, <laughs> I was like, wrong. Oh. <laughs> I forgot about the sound. Come part. on. I apologize. I can't tell the roll. <laughs> <laughs> so that's three plus your dexterity modifier, which is plus two. So that's five damage. Cool. Okay, anything else you'd like to do? Can I attack again or no? <laughs> do I only get one? <laughs> Just the one attack at this point. Okay. I would like to say, finally! <laughs> <laughs> cool. David. All right. Um... I would like to cast Cure Wounds on myself. Ooh. Position, heal thyself. Cool. Okay, so that will be uh, 1d8 plus your Wisdom modifier, I believe. Uh, oh, 1d8 plus... 3 plus... Whoop. So 10. Cool. Nice. Yep, so you nice. heal for 10 points of damage. Okay. And then can I use the rest of my action to take a more defensive stance? <laughs> uh, for flavor, yes. The, you, we won't have any additional effect, unfortunately. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> yep, so you um, grasp your holy symbol and you say a prayer to the, the flame and a minor glow kind of appears around you as your your wounds seem to begin to close up and then you level your shield at this snarling creature in front of you yeah okay. cool back to the top with cat okay um so it says that thunderclap cantrip is a five foot thing but I can't tell if it's melee or ranged 
Um, do you know off the top of your head? Mm hmm. Yeah, so the range of Thunderclap is five feet. So it's, it's essentially you have to be within five feet of. Okay, so one, two, it three, comes four. Out of you. Okay. Um, damn. Well, I'm going to, you know, hope that the sheep follows me because I'm protecting it and I'm going to move up. Um, like, I'll, I'll go ahead and do over two thirds, like over 20 feet. And I don't know how far that gives me because the squares aren't really showing up on my yeah. screen. All right, so I want to move parallel 20 feet. Yep. Okay, and so I'll still stay healthy different distance and I will um, produce flame and throw it at the wolf behind David. Okay, give me a ranged spell attack then. A ranged spell attack. So it's a roll plus my wisdom plus my spell attack, or just roll spell attack. So roll plus spell attack, which is d twenty plus, plus five. Yeah. Uh, natural twenty plus <laughs> five. Cool. If you would so... like the proof? There it is. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right, so take your D8 and roll it twice. Um, okay. Or roll 2D8, whichever way you'd like to do it. Uh, I'll do 2D8, because sounds. <laughs> yeah, we get it. Um, 4 plus 8 is 12 plus 5. Or wait, what was the plus? I forgot already. Uh, you won't, no, you won't just get a, you no get a plus. plus so 12. 12. 12 damage. That, yeah, you incinerate that wolf. <laughs> it's good and gone. Okay. Yikes. <laughs> and then I I say I'm sorry, Wolf. Out loud. <laughs> it does not hear you because it is No, I know, but bash. in general. In general. <laughs> jerk. In general, I like I say out loud to because I know someone is listening. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Kyle. All right. Um, I would like to move uh, a few feet closer to David so I can have a better angle on the other wolf before I shoot my next arrow at it. Okay, cool. So a few feet I'm going to take as being like, what, like maybe 15? That sounds good to me. That work for you? Cool. Yep. Okay. And now I'd like to shoot an arrow at the wolf in front of David. Yeah, cool. Um, so your friend is within five feet of the wolf. Um, let me just... Yeah. Okay. Cool. If you if you hit with this, you get to roll your sneak attack damage. Okay. Nice. <laughs> not like that. Not hit with that. As you draw this arrow to to take your shot, uh, the the haft of the arrow snaps, um, and the the string just kind of twangs. That one was dud. That one, that one. I hope you didn't make these arrows because yeah, that one, that one was <laughs> cool. Um, so the wolf in the entangle finally manages to free itself, which okay. is great. Yeah. I mean, just before everyone around it completely dies. Um, <laughs> and uh, Frendo in front of Mr. David is. Only going to get to roll 1d20 this time. No. And it's going to hit. Okay. Good. 
And it's going to do six damage. Okay. How are you doing, David? <laughs> I'm good. I'm. I'm. We're. We're here. We're in it. You're in it. Okay. I think I can take one more hit. You too. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. And after it kind of takes that bite, it's um. It's going to kind of shake its head a little bit and start taking a few cautious steps back away on top of that building <laughs> those are stairs <laughs> yeah. i was like where's it going <laughs> oh perfect it's in my range now so watch out bitch okay uh david if you want to have an attack of opportunity against the wolf you can um, I don't think so, but can I say something? Sure. Okay. Um, so I would, as it's starting to back up, I would t yell over my shoulder. Tall one! It knows something and it has paws! Okay. Ooh. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Um, I like it. Good use of your reaction, David. <laughs> <laughs> Next we have Holly. Um, The wolf just took a step like right in my line of vision and shooting. So um, can I take a few more steps toward it and then pull out my longbow and just go for it? Sure. Okay. Eleven plus two. Four attack. What do I do? Four. Eleven plus four. Yep. Four. That's gonna hit. Okay. So give me a D eight plus two. Just, just one D eight. Oh, you don't need like seven. <laughs> Sorry, that was just an accident. <laughs> I was like, go, just do the first one. <laughs> Ready? One okay. of them. That was that was the sound effect for one of them. <laughs> okay. Um, so we we have so many. Can you can you just type in roll one D eight for me? Is that any spaces in there? <laughs> yeah, so slash roll space one D eight. Ready? <laughs> okay. Four plus your two, that's six. That is exactly enough to kill this wolf. How do you want to do this? Um really awesomely. Um <laughs> can I do it with my bare can I do it with my bare hands? Well, no, because you fired an arrow. Oh, yeah. I would like the arrow to go straight through its eyes into yeah, its brain. Yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah. Like as, want... <laughs> as the arrow is coming towards its face, the wolf kind of looks as if it knows that its demise is coming and yeah. uh, bows its head and accepts the shaft in its socket. Wow. That's awesome. Oof. Indeed. Okay. Um, so I feel like we are round to um... David. That's another Holly fail just... on the death saving throw for guys. Okay, one more fail and this guy is gonzo. Um, David. David, it's your turn. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking. Uh... 
can I Oh, that's not going to do me any good. Um Sorry. <laughs> Uh, um. I'm assuming the wolves don't understand any kind of common language. Is that correct? Do I know that? How could you know that? You can only, you can try. You can try to discern that for us. Mr. DM, <laughs> uh, could I discern whether or not the wolf would understand me? For chance? <laughs> okay, how would I go about that? I mean, how would you how would you go about finding out whether a person could understand you? Mm, that's a great question. <laughs> okay, so I want to Uh, okay, so I would look at the wolf, the remaining wolf that just got untangled, right? That's mm -hmm. who's left. And I would say, um, Wolf, in the name of the sacred flame, we do not want to hurt you. We mean you no harm. Um, your master is dead. Join us now or resign yourself to darkness. Powerful stuff, powerful stuff. <laughs> um, give me a persuasion roll. Okay. So that's gonna be a d20. Mm -hmm. 13 plus, plus persuasion yeah. is four, four, so 17. Okay. Um, the wolf, hears you, looks at you, uh, and kind of tilts its head. Fuck. Um, and it... Uh, yeah, from, from, from what you can tell, it looks like it understood. In, in a similar way to the sheep in the tavern did. Mm. It's risky. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. We're back to the top of the round then with Cat. Um. I. Ask, I say, sheep, you need to come closer to us. No, I don't say that. Just kidding. Um, so who, uh, uh, I, because would I have perceived that from, can I see if I understood what uh, David just did? Like if I could perceive the same thing, the reaction from the wolf that David did? Um, yeah, give me a perception check. Okay. It is oof, six plus three, nine. Okay. Um, you saw David talk at the wolf um, and you would have seen the head tilt. Okay. From you, from the distance that you are, you wouldn't be able to see much 
in the way of kind of eyes would, or would i know else. if like would i know if like the wolf looks aggressive or passive from that um with your history with animals um and the amount of time you spend um kind of communing with nature and, and the beasts of the wild you would recognize that as a less aggressive stance okay so i am going to use as much of my movement as possible to get in between like like either saddled up next to david or like right in front of david like any anywhere kind of again putting a pro a pro protective stance kind of like you know i am protecting my pack like i you know kind of like like i don't want to i don't want to get be aggressive towards the wolf but i want to like definitely like you know be like mm -mm -mm. like make good choices here with my stance and then i want to call out if anybody has a scroll that they can that has the scroll to talk to creatures while we still have a creature to talk to i would appreciate it if they would also try to talk to said creature cool because like i know i can talk to creatures but i want <laughs> I want someone else to understand what's going on too. Yep. So gotcha. yeah, I'm I'm just using my movement and I'm um if if anything I'm I'm all I'll hold any action other than talking to my okay. my party. Do I need to hold something specific? You, uh, I was or... gonna say, yeah. Are you are you holding a specific action or? Um, if if the wolf comes towards us aggressively, I wanted to use a produce flame uh -huh. reaction cantrip to it. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I I I'll be ready to produce flame, but I don't want to do it. Okay. I'm just moving more protectively back, so I I wouldn't be like. Ugh! <laughs> I would gotcha. be, I, I would just personally be ready to use it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Okay. So, uh, that's my choice. I believe we have Kyle before the wolves, or is it the wolves before Kyle? Lost track. This is terrible. I think it's. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the wolves before Kyle because one bro they broke one broke from my entangle yeah. before we could yeah. attack. Yeah. yeah. So it's up to the wolf. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so the wolf is gonna step outside of the area of the vines, um, and it's gonna kind of put its four paws down flat on the ground and lower its head, kind of onto its onto its paws. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> that's it that's it for the wolf Carl. all right um can i move uh close to david and try to heal him some i mean you can certainly try all right so what i rolled is d20 Yep. So, are you skilled in medicine, or do you have um, any kind of bandages in your pack, or anything like that? I'm plus one medicine. Um, let's see if I got. I don't think I have anything specific on me that's medical related, though. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm gonna ask you to do then is I'm gonna get, ask you to give me a medicine roll, um, just to see if you can kind of staunch any bleeding. All right. And I have a plus one medicine. Yeah. So that'll be a fourteen. Okay. Um. So that unfortunately you in this in this kind of highly tense environment where everyone is a little bit on edge 
um, you weren't able to kind of apply any kind of bandage or any kind of real um, like in in the moment dressing um, so you just kind of kind of putting hands here there and everywhere to kind of stop the the wounds from from gushing but um yeah he's still he's still looking pretty pretty darn beaten up all right uh... are we still in initiative or do we have free actions yet um it's up to you guys um the the wolf has done its thing um however you want to interpret that so can i call out to my party out of initiative order or yeah, do you need me yeah, to wait well, till can, holly can, yeah i i'm i always okay. consider speaking to be a, a pretty free okay. act that you can do almost. um so i um call back and ask if again it, can anyone can anybody use the scroll that we were given the spell to talk to this creature cuz i am i i can talk again but i want someone else to know what's going on so i want you guys to understand cuz i i think call, out of game holly you have the scroll still right from when we were uh, in the tavern? Yeah, I was reading it. Yeah, you have the scroll still. So I'm I'm basically asking the party if anybody can access the magic to use the scroll. And DM, if I use the scroll, is that against one of my spell slots or mm -mm. is no. it, it's on its own? Okay, so I still want I still want to see if the party will, you know, join me in the speaking with animals endeavor. Because I like sense that they didn't believe me beforehand. So <laughs> otherwise, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask for the scroll. But cool, Holly. Uh, I don't know. Can I? I don't know. Can I do that? Or can I? Do I see if anybody wants? I have the scroll. Does anybody want the scroll? <laughs> so no. I I turn to David and I say, "You understand? Can can? Do you want to speak to the wolf?" Fair maiden, give me the scroll. <laughs> I will do the thing. <laughs> okay, I take it out I of my satchel and I throw it over to David. He catches it. Oh boy. If he Does wants. he catch it though? I don't know. <laughs> it's up to you. Um, you're you're proficient with improvised weapons, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think I was, you have yeah, to roll I for it, David. <laughs> uh, yeah, give me, give me a just, just a dex check. Okay. <laughs> um. Oh, okay. Twenty. <laughs> nice. Minus one. <laughs> well, okay, um, so eleven. <laughs> still good. It's still good. It's still, still good. good. It's still so it's kind of like one of the. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, which makes sense it's with the personality. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so you grab the scroll out of the air. What are you going to do with it? Um, I open it up and I say, "What do I do? What do I do?" <laughs> oh uh, shit! It's an elvish, isn't it? Can you read Elvish? Or no, it's, it in... it's not in Elvish, actually. Oh, it's not? In... No. Oh, it was just was something that I couldn't read? Yeah, it's in Goblin. Oh, it's in Goblin. That's what I can read Elvish. Holly yeah. can read Goblin. Holly, you know from your understanding of the Goblin language that it's a phonetic language. So um, mm -hmm. it's written as it's said. So he could just read out the words. He wouldn't understand what he's saying, but he would get the effect. Okay. Hey, kid, just read out the words. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Um, do we have actual words or do I? <laughs> you can make it up <laughs> if you want, I think. I don't know, DM. 
<laughs> exactly. What does what's the language? It's goblin. 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 What does goblin even sound like? Does anybody? It's like a lot know? of grunting. Yeah, I'd say it would be a little feral. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, right, right. Okay. Um. <laughs> Phonetically grunting. <laughs> okay. Um. Go. On fucking. Did I do it? Very good. Out yeah, that Hang seems on. about like right. That. <laughs> I'm gonna give. <laughs> I'm gonna give you to inspiration for that, David. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Good for um, you, David. Holly, how was this pronunciation? That wasn't the worst I've ever heard, but it'll do. <laughs> cool. Um, <clears throat> so, David, you can now speak with animals for about ten minutes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Great, great, great. So I would then holler over to the wolf um, and I would say, Wolf, what is your name? Um, and the wolf kind of looks surprised um, to be addressed directly uh, and says, <clears throat> my, 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 my name is Tobin. <laughs> yes. Bless. Tobin, in the name of the sacred flame, I'm sorry about your friends, but your master is dead now. Will you join us? My, my, my friend, my, my brothers. Oh, shit. <laughs> Devlin and Carthus, they're gone. That was my bad. The big one, she 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 she, she burned him up. <sighs> yes, I'm very sorry about that. But you attacked us. We're trying to take care of this sheep person. Are you a person too? I was before before the incident. The incident? Tell me more about it. What happened? All, all I remember was a, a bang in the middle of the night and a flash of light and and then I was all furry. No, 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 don't cry, don't cry, it'll be all right. We're going to try and help you. We're going to try and help everyone. Um, that's what we do, you see? Well, that's what I do, you see? And, um, yeah, so the, the grey-skinned man, um, he's, he's going to die soon. Is, is he really bad? He's... He's just the the hired muscle, really. Um, the the really bad guy is is at, at the at the tree fort. Hey, friend, what is he saying? Are oh, you relaying this back oh, to us? Oh, sorry, sorry. Right, everyone, this is Tobin, and he's. <laughs> Um, he's a person too, like the sheep. And also the, the, the bad, the apprentice dude is at a tree fort somewhere. Um, Tobin, can you take us there? Well, I'm quite badly hurt, but I, I, I do know the way. I don't, he was in Tangle, right? So he's fine. Mm. Right? His, his feelings are hurt. Oh, yeah, fine. <laughs> There's more emotional wounds, cat. That's our bad. <clears throat> All right. Does it like ask it if it likes tummy rubs? <laughs> Tobin, um, the giant lady wants to know if you like tummy rubs. 
Are you mocking me, sir? No, I'm just relaying because I'm the only one that can talk to you right now. And we've only got 10 minutes, so we've got to figure it out fast. It's definitely <laughs> the giant one that asked that question. Since it's I didn't say shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Tobin, I'm terribly, terribly, terribly sorry about your your brothers. Um but And I can we can we understand David when he's talking on his side of things, or do we know nothing? You're hearing DM. grunts and Okay, cool. Thank you. Snuffs and woofs and other such noises. Okay. Um so, so I say to the group. Um, so we've, um, we've killed his brothers and, um, we burnt one of them up, you know, and he's a little upset about it. I think his feelings are hurt, but he can take us to the tree fort, um, fort fortress of the trees and, um, um, I, I don't know. I've only got 10 minutes. What else do we not need to know? What else do I say? <laughs> Ask him if there's any other way we can help him in return for him taking us to this place. Does he have other family that we could reunite him with? Yeah, or... how's his family? How's the rest of his family? Oh, yeah. yes, yes, brilliant, very brilliant. Yes, um, yes, Tobin. <laughs> so we want to help, and of course we want to help you and, and anybody else that's been hurt or turned into animals, and uh, we'll do whatever we can, um, and. Uh, is there anything we could do to make it up to you? Um, I, I will say that your your brothers died valiantly um, and not of their own will, so I'm sure that the Silver Flame will have taken them in. And I try to, like, again, kind of back up towards Holly um, while this is happening, and... Uh, or actually, no, I'm standing right next to um, Kyle, don't I? And I, I whisper over to, uh, and I say, Mr. Moonstone, would you mind going and checking out the ashy one and checking to see if there's anything useful over there if he's still alive, question mark? Because I, I don't want to interrupt the conversation, but we need some more information and we're on a time limit, both in game and in not in game. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd, I'd be glad to do that. So I, I make my way over to the, uh, the gray guy as he's prone on the ground. And um, I guess I use my perception to see if there's anything we can discover on his body. Yep. Cool. Give me a perception check. Ah. <laughs> Perception's not very good, Kyle. I do have plus three. <laughs> oh, <Four. man. laughs> Yay. Um, g give me another die roll. Uh, the guy can't really stop you from looking at him, so. Okay. Cool. That's much better. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of frisk his pockets. You look around. Um, you find a pouch in his pocket that has uh, 14 gold pieces in it. You also find a key um, and a chicken leg for some reason. <laughs> A cooked chicken leg. All right. Um, <clears throat> I take the gold out, and then I toss the key to Holly and the chicken leg to Cat. <laughs> <laughs> like, here you go. Here's what I found. <laughs> Cool. Uh, the wolf pipes up to this to you at this point, David, and says, "Okay, well, there are, there are cages on the on the encampment with other people inside. They look like animals. They've been turned into animals, but they're people. My wife is there. She she's a bear now. 
don't know how that's going to work moving forward. Um, but if you could free my wife, I'd be very grateful. Yes, yes, of course we could. And of course, we're going to try and get the wand and turn everybody back. So you, she won't be a bear and you won't be a wolf anymore. And it'll work perfectly. Wink, <laughs> wink. <laughs> well, I, I, I certainly hope so. Shall, shall I lead the way then? Yes. yes. And then I turn to the party um, and say, um, Tobin's going to lead us. And there's other people that have turned into animals too. And his wife is a bear. <laughs> and also, we're going to go there now. Are you all ready? <laughs> all right. I pick up the whatever, the chicken leg, and I look curiously but I, at Kyle, but I tuck it into my pouch. And um, I I think from where I'm standing, I'm, uh, I'm nearby where at least one of Holly, no, I go over and pick up one of the fallen daggers from Holly, uh, that Holly threw and didn't get back. Um, Thank you. And, I uh, like so any of the like I kind of go by the ash in wolf and the like arrowed wolf and I get down on my knees and I hold my um shell which is a totem that links me to my who I believe in and I just whisper some words to the earth mother um in like I just say to the wolves or to the Earth Mother, or both simultaneously. Um, just some thoughts for passage and returning to the Earth and stuff and things. Um, and I, I just express that I'm sorry I can't do more for them currently, but I am. I want to learn how to do more than what I can do now. Um, and so, yeah, when I go visit those two bodies, I pick up holly's dispersed dagger and i bring it back to her and then i make my way back over to the sheep and the fallen dude cool okay so um you guys it seems are en route to the tree fortress yes of master noak um and I think that will be the end of this particular chapter of the Wild Sheep Chase for now. Um, but who knows what's going to happen <laughs> like, next time. So when we said we were playing a one-shot, we meant we are playing a one small story <laughs> arc. Because we all have lives across different uh, time zones. And it's really uh -huh. hard to play for a full three hours yes. at a time. <laughs> So we're going to try to do this story within a three to four hour <laughs> time frame, yeah. but that might not be all that happens at the exact same time. This is d and It's um, never what you expect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, hour, so. and I, I call David over to me, and I put my hands on him, and I cast Cure Wounds at a second level. Oh, wow. So that's 2d8 plus your Wisdom modifier? Mm hmm. And I say something along the lines of, I don't know who your sacred flame is, but I know that the Earth Mother wants me to help you. Um, and it's what, 2d8 plus my plus three, mm -hmm. I think. Okay. Uh, six and six and three, 15 hit points. Nice. Ooh. Cool. So, I, I sorry. Guess... I wanted to do that before I forget. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> I I guess this means that we will, at some point in the near future, hopefully, have another live show where we'll continue and and complete the story of the the wild sheep chase. Yes, I want to know what happens. Okay. <laughs> so watch this space. Well, and. <laughs> Yeah, so we have random social medias, mm -hmm. but mostly just subscribe to Project Nerdy and then you'll know when it shows up. And we also, you know, have other 
videos that happen supposedly sometimes <laughs> by, we people other than, by totally. other people other than me. <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Carl posts very regularly. Carl's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> About yeah. every other Tuesday, we definitely usually have a video. Yes. <laughs> That's fair. That's very fair. And I guess this is for the viewers and for uh, everybody else on here. I did post the topic for the next two weeks, and it's just uh, everybody's reaction to uh, Avengers Endgame, if you've seen it yet. Uh, feel free to kind of yeah. talk about that as much as you'd like. I have it. I'll probably be seeing it probably tomorrow after work. But uh, um, feel free to explore anything Marvel-related or Endgame specifically in your, your video if you feel like posting. And then maybe and we'll make our video. If our video has spoilers in it, we'll put spoiler at the top yeah, of the yeah, title. Yeah. And if our video doesn't have spoilers in it, we'll put not spoilery at the top of our title. Just so anybody who wants to see our different reactions at different points in their timeline of their own personal volition, like they'll know which videos are safe before they click on them. Perfect. Good call. Mm -hmm. The music it grossed one billion dollars worldwide already. Yeah. yeah, opening weekend. Yeah, I'm happy to be part of that statistic. <laughs> Same Z's. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I love how I, I wore my Veronica Mars shirt so that it would get, help me with my investigation and then never did it myself. <laughs> okay. Not yet. Not yet. I figured I'd figured other people might. Can we? Can we out of game talk about ourselves really quick before we go? Because we didn't have a lot of time to like. Like, yeah. Int like introduce who we were at all, or do we need to wait for that? Because I have guesses mm. about other people, like what kind of class they are. At least I have guesses on my other three compatriots. Can I at least get a yay or nay, or maybe I don't know. I also completely missed your first name when you said it, Kyle. <laughs> Wicket. Wicket. Oh, right. We said that beforehand. I forgot. Okay. Yeah. Wicket. So I think that uh, Wicket is a rogue, and I don't know David's name, but I think he's a cleric, and I think Holly's a ranger. Oh, man. I'm a rogue. <laughs> I can't pronounce my race, though, so. Mm hmm. Uh, I think Kyle's an elf because Ryan said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there are there are lots. Of, there Kyle, are lots what are you? Are you? Are you yeah, I I am a furbolg, which is a part of the giant race. That's awesome. Um, they're normally well, they're very reclusive. And that's how tall I am. So I guess I'm a. <laughs> well, I I'm. A, I am. I, I said that I'm 6'6 six, six because furbolgs full grown are generally seven feet or taller. Uh -huh. And so mm -hmm. I am not that That's large. adorable. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a furbolg. I tried to get, give as much hint mm -hmm. out as I could. Does I anybody like know my, my class? But I could be. Are you a druid? Yes, sir. <laughs> awesome. Are you a cleric? Yeah. Yeah. See, this is everything I've learned from watching Critical Role. Literally <laughs> never played before. <laughs> but I've watched hours and hours and hours. I was going to say, I was going to say you're a quick study, but you're, I mean, you're a long <laughs> devoted study. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Cool. Okay, so I guess that wraps it up for this session. Tune in next time to find out what happens at the tree Part fortress. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for giving us a little extra time, Holly. Sorry we all started late. Oh no, you're <laughs> good. I'm supposed to go over to a friend's house to watch Game of Thrones, so I'm like shit. They're gonna be pissed if <laughs> I'm late. They live a little far. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, bye, Project Mary. Yep. Bye, bye, live people. Yep. 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 Yep.